Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she called for the doctor to come quick, quick, quick. The doctor came with his bag and his hat, and he knocked at the door with a rat-a-tat. He looked at the dolly and he shook his head and he said, Miss Polly, put her straight to bed. He wrote on a paper for a pill, pill, pill. I'll be back in the morning with my bill, bill, bill. Girls and boys, today's story is called Invisible Me, Another Stripey Adventure by Wendy Binks. Stripey the emu chick lived at Fair Dinkum Flats with his 29 brothers and sisters and his parents, Crikey and Sheila. Stripey wondered why all the emu chicks had fluffy stripes while his parents didn't. It's called cam o -flash his sister Leggy told him. Dad says it keeps us safe by turning us invisible. Invisible? gasped Stripey. Are we invisible now? No, silly, said Leggy. We're only invisible when we're in a special place. But Leggy didn't know where that special place might be. Stripey really wanted to turn invisible, so he set off in search of someone who would know where his special place was. He went past Dingback Ditch and Furball Creek and was running through Dusty Bucket Gully when a voice came out of nowhere. Hi, Stripey! Stripey looked up, down and all around. There was nothing to see but rocks until something moved. And there was Bluey the Red Kangaroo with her Joey Socks. You're invisible, said Stripey impressed. I'm looking for the place where I can be invisible too. Do you know where that is? Hmm, said Bluey, scratching her chest. These rocks work well for us. Why don't you try here? Stripey lay down beside the rocks and tried hard to make himself invisible. But Bluey shook her head. Sorry, Stripey. Emu chicks must need a different place. You'll have to ask someone else. Stripey wasn't about to give up so soon. He ran past the rocks and up over the hill to Jerry Can Junction, where he heard a voice say, Hi, Stripey. Stripey looked up, down and all around. Suddenly, a tongue flickered, and there up a snappy gum tree was Swagger the Goanna. Swagger, said Stripey, you're invisible too. Do you know the special place where I can be invisible? I haven't any idea where that might be, said Swagger. But you can try mine if you like. Stripey stood against the tree and kept very still. 
No, that doesn't work at all, said Swagger. You'll have to ask someone else. So Stripey set off again in the direction of Spaghetti Springs, wondering what his camouflage could be, when a voice called out, Hi, Stripey! Stripey looked up, down and all around. And what a surprise! There was Toot, the western ground parrot, eating seeds. I didn't even see you, said Stripey. I wish I could turn invisible the way you do. Come and hide here with me, said Toot. Stripey squeezed himself into the undergrowth and held his breath. Well, he whispered. Toot flapped and shook her head. Oh dear, it doesn't work at all for an emu chick. You'll have to find somewhere else. Stripey was determined not to give up. He ran across the springs and passed the old miner's shack at Creaky Chair Creek where he heard an unexpected voice. Hi, Stripey. Stripey looked up, down and all around. And there was Shuffle the Echidna waking from a nap. Wow, I couldn't even see you, Stripey exclaimed. Do you know the place where I can be invisible too? Shuffle shook her head. No idea. But why don't you try here with me? So Stripey lay down where Shuffle had been. Shuffle took one look at Stripey and laughed. You look like a very odd Stripey toilet brush. I guess you'll have to ask someone else. Stripey set off more quickly than before. He couldn't wait to be invisible. He was just passing some houses on the edge of Dunnydore Town when a voice called out of the blue. Hi, Stripey. Stripey looked up, down and all around. There, on a washing line, between the socks and the jocks, was Hanger, the fruit bat. What a great place to hide, said Stripey. I'm looking for the place where I can be invisible. Do you know where it is? I haven't got a clue, said Hanger. But you can try hanging out with me. It wasn't easy. But Stripey managed to hang upside down. Wherever your special place is, it's certainly not the washing line, said Hanger. You'll have to ask someone else. Stripey set off again, even though his legs were getting tired. Soon, he arrived at the Dunnydore football field. It was so noisy. There were people everywhere and Stripey felt very small. He saw the two crows, Rody and Scrap, and called out, Hey, guys! Rowdy and Scrap looked up, down and all around. Stripey, said Scrap. We didn't see you there at all. You're invisible. Stripey looked down at himself, then around at all the people. That's when he realised that everyone was Stripey, just like him. 
I've done it. I've turned invisible," laughed Stripey. "I've found the special place for me." But Rowdy and Scrap looked at each other and shook their heads. "Oh no," said Rowdy. "This isn't the right place for you, Stripey. You belong in the bush." There must be a place there where you can be invisible. Ah,、oh, had he come all this way for nothing? Stripey felt so disappointed. It had been a very big day, and he had a long way to go home. When Stripey finally arrived back at Fairdinkum Flats, Crikey and Sheila were very relieved to see him. Leggy and the other chicks were already in a pile, fast asleep. Stripey snuggled in too. And guess what? There, amongst the leaves and grass in this very special place. No one would have guessed those thirty emu chicks were there at all. The end. And that's the end of the story. Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she called for the doctor to come quick, quick, quick. The doctor came with his bag and his hat, and he knocked at the door with a rat a tat tat. He looked at the dolly and he shook his head, and he said, "Miss Polly, put her straight to bed." He wrote on a paper for a pill, pill, pill. I'll be back in the morning with my bill, 